We're trying to restore this country back to a constitutional republic, which it was founded on. We're moving straight to socialism and, and things that that leads to, and I don't want that for my children. I have children. I'd like to be able to put through college and tell them they still have the chance to be anything they want to be in this country. I really want our politicians to understand that they work for us, the citizenry. I think they're getting too big. They're spending way too much money. We become happy with our prosperity and our lives have become so busy, we've let it slip through our fingers. The Tea Party movement basically started uh, with a protest led by a woman named Kelly Carinder, who sometimes blogs as Liberty Bell. She's a mom blogger in Seattle who organized a protest against the stimulus bill uh, in mid-February uh, in Seattle. Uh, word of that spread quite rapidly through blogs and Twitter and Facebook and such. That same weekend, two others were organized for the next day, one in Denver and one in Mesa, Arizona. Then the following Monday, Rick Santelli on CNBC gave his famous on-air rant where he called for having a Chicago Tea Party uh, in July, and nobody wanted to wait until July, but the name Tea Party stuck, and uh, a wave of protests was then organized uh, just a couple of weeks later uh, with an even bigger follow-on on April 15th. And from that, the Tea Party movement was really born. Though nearly everyone agrees on how the Tea Party began, confusion remains as to who Tea Party members are. These are ordinary people doing extraordinary things, and every generation has done that from the founding of this country. Uh, you look at World War II, um, the, the civil rights era. They're the people who get up at 8 o'clock, go to work, come home, and want, they don't want to be here. They want to be at home with their children and with their families, but they're here because they see that if they don't come out here, then their families aren't going to have the same lives that they've had. It is primarily composed, I think, of people who uh, run small businesses or work for small businesses who don't feel like they are sheltered by some big organization that's going to negotiate for them uh, with the big shots in Washington and that they're getting screwed as a result. I think one of the dangers is that, uh, that the Tea Party is a movement. It's not a political party like the Republicans or the Democrats. The Republicans and the Democrats, they have to come up with solutions. They have to identify problems. Tea Party doesn't exactly have to do that. It's a, it's a movement that uh, that talks about uh, um, how government has abandoned them, both federal and state governments, and they're angry, and they make other people angry. I think we should think of our founding fathers as still living on, the ideas were great. The experiment was a unique experiment of individual liberty and freedom. We do not want to lose that. I'm not sure exactly, exactly what that, what that means. I, I do have a feeling that parts of the Constitution have been, have been reinterpreted by courts over the last hundred years and are, are, are seen differently now. Uh, than they were, say, when the when the Constitution was first written. But what part, what part are they are they talking about? Are these social programs? Are these moral programs? Uh, hard hard to say. I think frustration's been building in the country for actually generations, uh, and, and I think that that the Tea Party is is the latest, I won't call it a culmination of that frustration, uh, but I think it's the latest manifestation. I mean, you, if you go back to the 70s, think about the resonance of things like Patty Chayefsky's network, where everybody's sticking their head out the window yelling, I'm mad as hell and I'm not going to take it anymore. You know, I mean, the Tea Party is that in a sense, only uh, with more concrete objectives than just sticking your head out the window and yelling. In response to government bailouts, more than 1,700 people rallied in Knoxville, Tennessee on April 15, 2009 as part of a national Tea Party. For many, it was the first time they had participated in political activism. The Tea Party movement in Tennessee gets a lot of sympathy, but it's actually not especially well organized compared to other states. Uh, and that's been Tennessee's history in general with movements. Uh, ten Tennessee is a state full of individualists. They're not joiners. It's really quite hard to get Tennesseans 
actively organized. In 1999 to 2002, we had about three years or so of tax wars, as we used to call them, where the state capitol was swarming with people, carrying signs and screaming and yelling and uh, uh, right-wing radio people, hosts walking around. They were all upset about the possibility of a state income tax, which reminds me something of the Tea Party. These people were mad as they could be, and they came down here and they won. Let me give you that number again. It's 1-877-762-8762. It gets you right into the Capitol switchboard, and it's toll free. You know, in order for this movement to stay alive, we have to step into phase two is what I call it. You know, instead of going out protesting and waving your signs, I'm angry about this or that, we have to become more professional about it. They need a little bit more seasoning. A lot of these folks are new to politics. They don't know their way around the political system. And they need to retain their outsider energy while picking up some of that insider savvy, and that's a very difficult thing to do. And I think the Tea Party movement, and I'm sympathetic, thinks nobody's listening to us. Nobody's, nobody's helping us. But, but beyond that, they have a real difficult time knowing where to go. My husband and I were often sitting watching television and getting angry at what we were hearing. And actually what spurred me to get started was a letter that um, a viewer of Glenn Beck had written and he talked about needing to get up off the couch and do something. And I realized that was us too. With things like blogs and particularly Twitter and Facebook, uh, the Tea Party is really self-organized. Having events, getting active, that, that is what really engages people because, um, you know, people listen to the radio, they get mad about what's going on, they watch the news, they get mad about it, and uh, there's no outlet really for them to make some kind of change. Instead of participating in a Tea Party group, Dr. Aaron Margulies leads the Knoxville chapter of the Republican Jewish Coalition. Margulies and his group believe that change will happen within the existing Republican Party. I'm always emailing or calling whatever level of politician from senator all the way down to our county commissioners and saying, hey, this is going on. We, you know, I don't support this bill or I do support that bill. I also, they're on my email list and when they do something good, I let everyone in my group know that this representative did something very well. I did not join the Tea Party Caucus in the Congress, uh, and, and I said at the time that while I feel there are many good people in the Tea Party, uh, and, and many of their views are consistent with mine, particularly um, uh, my biggest concern is the national debt and the deficits and things like that, but uh, uh, I am a member of and, I, and very loyal to the Republican Party because I'm grateful to the Republican Party for having given me their nomination for Congress several times over the years and I believe that the Republican Party is our best hope uh, for the future of this country. I'm proud to be an American. I will not apologize for being an American. I will not apologize for the American way of life, for capitalism, for private property, for the things that create the jobs and the prosperity that has made us the greatest nation in the history of mankind. Very few people are openly criticizing them because, because they have a message that in part is right, is correct, and that is that, that, that the government is not, is not solving the problems. Nashville correspondent Tom Humphrey says the Tea Party has not had much impact in Tennessee's state legislature. There are 11 independents running for governor this year. I don't think any of them have seized this Tea Party vote as such to unify those folks. Instead, they seem to have branched toward the Republican Party, even though the man who won the Republican primary, Bill Haslam, had uh, much less Tea Party support than Ron Ramsey, our lieutenant governor, who had a lot. Um, you know, we did endorse Ron Ramsey, and no, he did not win the, the gubernatorial primary. But, uh, you know, we, we feel like we kind of shaped the debate. Every one of them was talking about the things that we were 
uh, pushing out to the public. You know, they were talking about adopting the you know, the Arizona law. They were talking about you know health care. We were uh, actively going out and um, telling the public about this stuff. And so that's what they were talking about. So some people might see that as, as a loss for us, but we really see it as a victory because that's, that, that's a step in the right direction. Nobody can get everybody. Although I will tell you, President Reagan used to say that if you found somebody in politics you agree with 80% of the time that that's as good as it could get. And I've added to that that even husbands and wives and best friends disagree sometimes. So you can't, uh, you just can't get everybody. When you look around and see the people around you, you know that you are not alone in worrying about the direction of the country. You know that you are not alone in worrying that we're moving towards a direction that none of our forefathers could have possibly imagined. And you know that there are like-minded people that are going to help you make those politicians hear you and make those politicians listen. That's the value of the Tea Party, is all of you together. The Republicans are afraid of the Tea Partiers. They're afraid of them. And so instead of being bold, they're afraid that they're going to lose that Tea Party support and those people will stay home. There is a possibility that they show up in force these elections, elect people they think are their friends, and then expect everything to change overnight. Uh, and then when it doesn't, they get disappointed and they all go home. If they do that, they're not going to make lasting change. So they have to uh, they have to be a little bit more realistic about politics. One of the things that the Tea Party movement has done is it's brought the probably millions of people into politics who were politically tuned out in the past. And a lot of those people are going to stay involved and that's going to make a difference. If they could unify and direct themselves and have issue-oriented presentations rather than simply being mad at something, yeah, they would have a lot more impact. I don't know if they'll get there or not. Maybe.